Silvereen SGR 1500, how to remove master glue from a concrete floor. We always, we always recommend to do a test because there are so many glues in the market that it's difficult to determine if our material is going to remove every glue up there. So we always recommend a test. Here's a list of the items that you will need to do a test on your floor and then also a list of the results of the application of the test that we're looking for. Select a small area, one area where there's heavy glue. Apply about a 2 by 2 square foot area. Apply the material. Let it sit there for 12, min 12 hours and after 12 hours come back and if it dry, apply a little more material, make it wet, and then give it about five minutes and then scrape it. If all the glue comes off at that point in time, then you have a good positive test, which means that you can do your project quite easily removing the glue that is in your floor. Here's a list of the items you will need to do the large project. Planning and preparing on the job site. It's also important that you prepare your job site ahead of time and plan. We always place cardboard outside the door of the project so that way our shoes can be wiped on and not track the product all over the place. We also figure out the way to exit, or easiest way to exit from the project. As you notice, there may be steps to crawl, go up and then an access to go outside where you need to wash your tools and everything else. The product is environmentally safe, so it could be washed to the drain with no issues behind it. The second part to look at is also you have to make sure the product is very thin and it runs and if the floor is not level it will all the product will tend to go one direction so we always create a small one inch barrier of absorbent at each door so that way the product doesn't go outside the project area that we're trying to treat Applying the Seal Green SGR 1500 remover. Here's a method that we love to follow uh, that it makes it easy to apply and it prevents from splashing and getting the area too messy. We use a nine inch very thick nap roller, at least an inch thick in nap. And then we slowly apply it. You want to apply it richly into the floor so that way it has time to sit there for 12 hours and not dry and penetrate through the glue. Uh, some glues may be thick, some might be thin. So you want to make sure you put a nice thick coat of the material on top of it. As you can see, we try to avoid walking on it simply because the uh, material, it is very, tracks very easily and also creates a slippery surface. So be careful as you apply this. And if you have to walk on it, be careful when you walk on top of it as well. This is a soy-based product, so it's thoroughly environmentally safe. So there is no issues, there's no smell, there's no BOC. So we could be working in this office as well as people working in the office next to us and there will be no smell to affecting them. The product will remain in place for at least 12 hours. After 12 hours have passed or the next day, we come back and you will notice that in the in the video that the center of the room is higher, so therefore most of the remover has uh, rolled down to the edges of the room. You can see where it has puddled. That means the lighter areas have cleaned, but wherever it puddled, it dried out. So what we do is we do a really quick light treatment over it and let it remain there for about 10-15 minutes so that way it re-energizes the glue remover and it's easier for us to scrape it off. As you can see, it's just rolling at a quick pace of the whole floor. Just enough to get the floor wet. We can come back later on and then scrape it. Try to make the job as efficient as possible. So therefore, by reapplying a little bit more material, it makes it easier to remove the glue off the floor. Removing and collecting the glue. Uh, if you need to walk on that wet product, uh, sometimes we use what we call spike shoes. They're shoes with little uh, spikes on the bottom, and those allows us to walk on the floor without getting our shirts dirty. Uh, we usually don't use them because the floor, it is slippery, and sometimes it's difficult to walk on them. So therefore, what we do is we try to use them as little as possible, but they are very effective if you have to walk on a wet floor and not get your shoes dirty. The next step is we get our trash can with a line 
liner in it so it's easier to dispose the material as we collect it. We start by using the scraper or our spatula. Sometimes people like to use a squeegee. We like to use the scraper because it's a little bit stiffer than a squeegee and it does conform better to the surface of the concrete so therefore it picks more of the glue and le least amount of passes through it. As you can see we're collecting the glue here and as we collect the glue we are spreading the absorbent. The absorbent is designed for two purposes. One is to reduce the puddles and collect the liquid and two is to prevent us from spreading out, uh, splashing on the wall as we collect the material on the floor. As you can see he creates a small liquidy area and then he moves the absorbent to that area. The absorbent starts absorbing the material and eliminating having a lot of this material running all over the place. You also notice that we work from the door into the room and therefore we don't have to step on the material that is wet at the present time and allows us to clean out the material a lot faster more efficient. One of the most challenging areas in this jobs are removing the glue off the edges near the wall. Two reasons in this case or in this job we have to be careful not to damage the freshly painted walls so therefore we try to keep any splashing or any material off the walls and when we work near the wall typically they're the ones that require most attention we will use another scraping tool for that which you'll see later in the video but as you can see here we apply the absorbent as we collect the material and puddles and then we just basically move it around until we create a nice uh, mountain of material absorb and we can collect all this material and then dispose of it rather easily. As you can see in the video you will see also notice that there's still some areas in the floor that look dark. Those areas still have glue on them and what happens is that the floor is not perfectly even so you're going to have some peaks in the floor and some valleys even though they're not visually, visually available to us they're still there and that's where the dark areas are so therefore they're going to require a little bit more treating in those areas. So first we also reapply a little more around the edges because as I mentioned before they're the ones that are more challenging and any main big spot in the middle of the floor we quickly just touch it up with the material so it has an opportunity to work a little more into it in that area. Usually a 5-10 minute application uh, that's all it really requires and then we get the product uh, off the wall. We will follow after we do that with a little scraper hand scraper that we have to remove the edges anything that might be in the edge that we cannot reach with a large spatula. It allows us to get very close to the wall without any damage and scrape those areas that may need a little more attention. We will follow the, the complete edge of the wall just to make sure that everything gets cleaned up as best as possible. You notice that the center spots are already melting so therefore they're ready to wash. Washing the floor. The first thing that we do when we wash the floor is to mix the seal green oil cleaner degreaser that comes with the product. We use this, as I mentioned before, it's a soy based product. It does leave an oily base on top of the floor, maybe slippery, and also we want to make sure that that oily surface is completely removed so that way whatever the following steps that we're going to be doing with this floor will not fail. At this point in time, what we do is we mix it, we fill, we pour everything into the bucket, fill up the five gallon bucket. The product comes in different sizes so you may need different size containers. We use a mop to, to apply the material so we don't need to do that and then we in this case you're watching us using a scrub brush it's a stiff bristle scrub brush just to try to remove whatever things are there that are maybe a little bit tight on the floor this helps us do that this is one method of doing it we also will be showing you here in the video the other method to do it if you want to do floors a little faster or you have such machine but a scrub brush will also work as well in doing the final wash once he scrubs it a little bit we apply water from a ho clean water from a hose we always try to mist it so that way we don't have a lot of water just just enough to collect and then we follow with a shop back as you can see as he shop backs the floor it is collecting all the dirt the glue and everything else all at once a lot of our customers like to do a second just clean water job which means that you just basically after you clean up all this you come back and you spread just clean water shop back it up and that will make sure that your floor has nothing left on it of impurities to prevent you from doing your next flooring here's the other example that we use we use a seal green uh, diamond pad it's a pad that scrubs the floor. It has impregnated diamonds, so it really gives it a good scrub to the floor and removes whatever is there in the floor. It's not designed to remove the glue. It's designed to scrub the floor well. As you can see, he is preparing the device called a floor maintainer that is, applies the oil cleaner degreaser just enough to get it wet. A heavy wet is better. This machines the wetter the floor, the better they work. And then he just goes ahead and starts scrubbing the floor in a simple motion, not too fast, not too slow, just 
enough to do that. Give it a good scrub to the floor in that area. A lot of the professionals, this is what they use to get a little more efficiency in cleaning the floor. Uh, homeowners also, some of them use this too as well because they don't want to spend a lot of time brushing. It is an option if you're doing very large floors. Highly recommend to use a scrub pad with the diamonds and the machine. They do give you a lot of square footage rather quickly with very little effort. We follow by spraying a little water on the floor and then we immediately shot back and you can see there how clean the floor is getting at that point in time. A lot of times the floor is left at that area and now you have removed all the glue from the floor completely and a lot of times a, sec a second wash is takes place just to make sure that the floor is perfectly clean. Then we allow the floor to dry. Dry floor and final touch-ups. After the floor is dry, we can we follow again the floor and make sure with this hand scraper that there is no items that are left behind. Sometimes just little touch-ups here and there, mostly next to the wall where the most challenging part of the job typically is. So we go around and just scrape them off uh, and then sweep them off the floor and then the floor has been basically completed. We allow the floor then to dry. It's also important to know that you have several options that you could do with this floor after the floor is dry. As you can see in the picture, this is a two hour dry floor, a lot of character on the floor, a lot of stains that are there. This is a 70 year old concrete floor with a tile pattern that is embedded in the concrete, which is really nearly impossible to remove off, even if you grind the floor quite deeply. So here you can see what the floor looks like a couple hours dry. Some of the options that you have from us is that once your floor is nice and clean, you can come back and stain it with a transparent color stain. It's a water-based stain, safe to use, and then leverage the pattern tile that you have on the floor, as well as some of the stains and give it that antique uh, floor with a lot of character. This is very commonly done. At Seal Green we have about 36 different colors that you can use to create a beautiful floor. This corner will be followed by a couple coats of sealer and a shine gloss so if you want it to be very glossy.